Hey, welcome back. Uh, today on Liquid Lunch, we are celebrating, among other things, National Linguini Day. So get yourself a nice bowl of pasta. You could have the black squid ink linguini. You could have the whole wheat linguini. You could have the gluten-free linguini. But no matter what, today, have some linguini. Okay, now, um, getting serious about things. Everyone's talking about the virus and the COVID and the vaccine and will you give it. The mothers don't want to give it. The teachers want it to go back to school. So much to decipher. Um, so what better way to kick off this show today than with Dr. Dean Finelli. He's a PhD. He's an expert on pharmaceutical and chemical-related technologies. And uh, Dr. Dean, thanks for joining us again on Liquid Lunch. Really appreciate it. Um, I personally, as a Wall Street guy who's gone through a lot of public filings, as a guy who's been on the other side where we have to make public filings, um, I don't believe a darn word that any of these public company CEOs ever say, to be honest with you. And Pfizer is saying that they're going to have key data um, by the end of this month. It sounds too convenient to me. Yeah, it's certainly. Uh, thanks for having me. Great to be back. Uh, certainly, that's it's moving very, very quickly. I, you know, by the end of October is is pretty quick. You know, I would have anticipated December as a more realistic time frame. But look, I looked at the preliminary data. The safety profile looks pretty good from the phase one data. The efficacy looks good. It looks like this is producing these antibodies that will help fight the virus and prevent. The virus so things look like they're moving in the right direction uh and you know if he says that the ceo says they're going to have it by the end of this month um you know they've made a pledge they're not going to put this out there or even apply for approval until they have the safety and the efficacy data so things look like they're moving in the right direction all right so just you know so we know i understand where you're coming from i know you're an expert on pharmaceuticals and chemical related technologies do you ever do work for Pfizer, you personally? No, I do not. Okay, good. I just want to make it clear. So you're giving us an objective op opinion here that you think it's good. In your expert opinion, how long does it typically take from the start of a vaccine to actually human administration of the vaccine? Yeah, so typically when you're talking about vaccine or drug development in general, you're talking the span of 10 to 15 years. I mean, here we're doing it in a span of 10 to 15 months. So definitely this has been sped up. The fastest the vaccine was ever approved, I believe, is four years. So even in that, you know, this is moving very, very quickly. But nonetheless, the FDA said, you know, safety and efficacy are going to be of the utmost priority. So they're not going to approve something unless it actually works and it is safe. All right. Um when I mentioned Wall Street before, uh, my background is in short selling. And if any biotech said that they were going to compress a cycle from 10 to 15 years to 10 to 15 months, I'd be short that stock for the next 10 years, me personally. You know what I mean? Because usually the process is not pleasant uh, to, to these companies. You know, there's phase after phase after phase. You know, they get good news in a phase, but one person on the commission says one thing that's misunderstood and the stock goes down 50 points because they think, oh, no, you know, something in there. The whole thing's positive. They go into phase three but uh this you know and um so if the they're saying now that they'll have hundreds of thousands of doses ready um the way the you know progressives at least and the left-wing media portraying it that they don't want anything to go back to normal until everyone's vaccinated right so right. what's the real scalability let's say you know i think one of the standards should be that any politicians advocating for this vaccine should take it first and have their grandkids take it because that would tell. No, I'm being serious. That would tell America we feel safe, our loved ones. You know what I mean? But right. um, what's the real scalability? What can they get up to if this thing is approved and deemed safe? Yes. Yeah, so as really unprecedented as these trials are in phase three being conducted, these companies are already mass producing their vaccine candidates in the hope that once it's approved, it will be available to the public. So it's not like your typical drug development where, you know, you wait for approval and then you roll it out here. Hundreds of thousands, millions of doses are being produced of various of these vaccine candidates just so that once one is approved, it'll be available. Now, logistically, the Moderna and Pfizer, which are two of the top three there, they have to be uh, kept at very low temperature. So rolling this out to the general public is 
a completely different logistical issue. So general public probably sometime Q2 of 2021, but maybe emergency use and use for these essential workers, healthcare people, and people with you know uh, risks of uh, you know, over 65 and comorbidities, probably maybe some emergency use authorization by before the end of this year. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're up to speed on this stuff, but, you know, I do a lot of, before I go on air like a madman, and I read things, I go back and double check them and source them and try to figure it out. It appears to me that there's overwhelming evidence that two of Dr. Fauci's, uh, you know, prized possessions, side, you know, right hand man and woman are the two founders of Moderna. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think the, the process can separate <laughs> those two? Like, why would Moderna be in there um, other than their relation to Fauci? I'm just asking him, is it true? Yeah, no, no, I mean, are, are his and, you know, former protégés running Moderna? Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. I think, you know, that's maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it got him a seat at the table. But Moderna's been at this for 10 years. They don't have an approved vaccine yet or an approved drug, but they know when it comes to RNA, and that's the mRNA is what they're using as to elucidate this immune response. They're experts in this. And I can assure you that, you know, any company that's moving something forward, if it didn't work and, you know, worst case scenario, it wasn't safe, that's a public relations nightmare. And Moderna was one of the companies last week uh, that pledged that they would not seek approval until they had adequate safety and efficacy. So, you know, maybe it's a coincidence. It's a good point, but I don't think it's going to have any bearing on whether a Moderna vaccine is approved or not. I had uh, public interest attorney John Banzeff. He's a professor down at George Washington Law. Uh, I had him on last week, and he said that um, in his reading of the Moderna statement that they, that they would have uh, adequate, uh, I, I forget what the term he used, like adequate uh, sufficiency that, it, that it's safe. He said it was uh, actually lower then the, the terminology they used was actually lower than the typical standard they use coming out of the FDA. And he said, you know, on the semantics of it, it could be 50-50 work. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly right. So the U.S. FDA put out guidance in June saying what, they, what standards they were looking for, and that's exactly what they said. They're looking for 50% efficacy, which means, you know, it may work in me and not work in you. So... Uh, they set a low standard. Obviously, we're in an unprecedented situation, but yeah, they're looking at 50 percent. Typically, you'd want much higher. And to get that so-called herd immunity to get this thing uh, contained, we're going to probably need in the 60 to 70 percent uh, vaccination range and an efficacy range. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And um, so do you do like... Um class action work where you, you know, you're an expert on different types of pharmaceutical cases or is that in, in, in your wheelhouse anywhere? So I'm an, a patent attorney, so I work with drug companies to protect their technologies. So I wouldn't, I have acted as an expert before, but I'm not into class actions. Got it. So, um, you know, in your expertise, I'm glad you're not in that business because then again, I feel like you'd favor a side and you're protecting the company's technology, which I like. Um, so what do you what is the FDA typically looking for on an efficacy? Because John Banzeff was saying 75, 80 percent is usually where they want to be. Yeah, it really depends on what you're trying to do. So like when you think about a measles, uh, for example, there you need, you know, 95 percent, 98 percent herd immunity. So you need a much higher standard to get that uh, get that type of virus contained. Here we're looking at a lower standard. So it's not a magic number where it's always 90 percent. But I can tell you. Uh, I agree with Professor Bansef. It's usually higher than 50% in the 70, 80% range. Yeah, that's what he was saying. So, you know, and he was, he, you know, he's a good guy. He doesn't really have an ax to grind because he's a public interest attorney. You know what I mean? He brings cases where he sees like safety measures and stuff out there. Um, and he said, you know, it's basically every person who goes in is a coin flip. You, he, you know what I mean? It may work, it may, it may not work. And then there's outliers. So I, I appreciate you, you know, taking you know my tougher questions because a lot of people want to know this stuff and i know i think 65 percent of moms said they wouldn't give their kids this vaccine for a while if ever so you know people are still scared of it i think yeah people are very concerned i mean we're speeding things up and people are concerned about the safety and i i agree with them you know at this point you know if you're in the i don't know box whether you'll get it or not that's 
you know, I, I understand that. Hopefully, you know, as people see other people getting it and people see that it's safe and it's working, you know, that'll inspire more people to get it because we definitely need a large chunk of the population to get this. All right. Dr. Dean, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Any chance you're going to have some linguine tonight? I, well, now that you said it's National Linguine Day, it's on the menu, so I guarantee I'll have Boom! it. Boom! I saw that vowel at the end of the name. Uh, Thank you, my brother. Appreciate okay, it. Have a great care. day. All right, you're watching Liquid Lunch. We're going to come back right after this and do some news of the day.